So that's uh, a Windows Server 2016, which has got Active Directory Domain Controller and DNS is already installed. Um, I'm going to install the DHCP on this machine. So this has got a static ID address 20.3, which is running, uh, which is configured to configure the Active Directory services. So if you look at here, um, we have got the IP address, which is a static IP. Um, so static IP address has been configured. DNS is given as a local machine so for the testing. Um, and I can see all the domains and everything. So let's go and install the first uh, DHCP services. So click on add roles and features and click next. It's a role based features I'm going to install. Click next. Um, so on the machine which is running on this IP address and the service that I'm looking to install is DHCP services. So it needs some features. Um, that it will pick by itself so click yes next <laughs> next next and restart the destination if you are uh, install so now the machine is installing with dhcp services so i'm just configuring the dhcp service or installing the dhcp service <clears throat> um just to make sure since it's running on the virtual machine i have removed on the vmware virtual network the NAT DHCP services has been removed here, so there is no additional DHCPs on this network, right? So installation is succeeded, close, right? Go and complete the configuration. Next, as an administrator, commit, done, finished. So DHCP is installed. Now we can see the DHCP is here. So from here, I can go and manage DHCP. So now this is the DHCP manager. Right, you can see here um, the machine name and there's the IP address. There's no scope, nothing at all. So I'm going to create a new scope. Click on new scope. Next, I can give a name. New scope name. Next, the starting IP address I'm going to give here. 20.50 to 192.168.20.100 so class c next if you want to do any exclusion or i can give an exclusion of ips maybe say 55 to 192.168.20.60 just five ip address i just wanted to exclude and then next um, so, as usual, a default on wired network is 8 days. You can see here it's 8 days, right? Um, so, I'll leave it as default, but if you want to change it, you can change it. Um, next, and wireless, as we discussed, it's 24 hours. Um, yep, configure. Just want to configure these options now. Click next. So, my gateway on this network is 20.2. So, I'll add that. Yep, gateway has been added. Uh, see, as I said, DNS server, since it's on my domain controller, it's picked the parent domain and the IP address of it, it picked it. If you have got a second one, you can add the server name and IP address and you can attach here. So I don't have it, so I don't want to do that. Um, so I got only one DNS, then it's just been added here. Next, Wins, we don't have Win server here. So there's no NetBIOS computing gaming system. It's also old technology and still Microsoft is using but we don't really need it, right? As explained before, it's used by net use and net set commands, and but technically it's been replaced with the DNS services. So if you have got DNS, you don't really need to do that. Click next. Yep, activate the scope. Next. Once you click activate, right, the scope is now activated. I can see I have a pool on the pool from 150 50 to 100 ip address and there's an exclusion range as well is there any lease ip addresses i don't have anything because none of those machines been turned on so i'm going to turn on my first computer here power it on and the second computer here i'm going to power on my second computer too so they both machines are configured to receive the ip address from dhcp so once we locked into this computer right let's log into this computer and I'll go to the second machine and and these two are cloned computers so I just clone these machines um, so 
I had this first machine. So to test this one, what I've done is I went on to manage and created a clone. So I got this machine and then once I cloned it, I renamed this computer to PC02. So if you look at this computer name, um, this has got PC02 as the computer name, uh, PC02. Um, and of course, uh, since um, uh, cloned, I just confirmed everything has got a different MAC address and everything. Yep, they, they both has got a different MAC address and they haven't have any IPs yet. So if you go here, <coughs> this is PC01. Right, now what I'm going to do, I will confirm them by changing the network settings to receive the IP address from DHCP. So I'll go to properties, TCP IP4. They are already in automatic IP configurations. So that means they must have received an IP address from DHCP. Go to the status, click on detail, and I can see it. Yeah, DHCP enabled, receive my first IP address from the scope. And I can see my DHCP gateway is being received. DHCP server, I can see that. DNS server, I can see as I configured. And also I can see my domain name is being received. So let's close that and confirm on the second machine whether he has got the IP address. So let us go to that second machine, Ethernet adapter settings. Um, let's come back. IP4. Yep, it's DHCP settings is enabled. Um, status. And I can see the second IP, so 50, 51. So both IP is being given to these two computers. Let's close that, close that, and close that. Let's go back to the DHCP server and now refresh and see whether I can see those. Yep, I can see those uh, specific IP addresses that I have <coughs> received on both computer is listed down here. So that tells me uh, these two clients are receiving the IP address from my DHCP server. Uh, what else we can do from here? Um, as we discussed, we can go and assign, we can exclude some IPs, we can filter some IP addresses. So let's see how we can do these tasks. We're filtering an IP address, excluding and blocking those uh, machines to receive IP address. So let's go back to DHCP. First thing what we do, we'll try and do a simple exclusion, right? Um, just to try and exclude an IP address. So I'm going to see on the IP pool here, I can create a new exclusion IP. So to create a new exclusion IP, I can do both ways. I can just go right click, new exclusion range, and I can provide 192.168.20. Say 90 to 192.168.20. Uh, so I'm just going to exclude that IP right there. So there's another exclusion range is also given on this network. So this way we can exclude an IP. And to reserve an IP address, I can do a reservation. So to do a reservation, let's go and reserve this machine which has got 51 IP address. I wanted to change uh, this machine IP address to something else as a reserved IP. To do that, I'll need to find out the MAC address of this machine first of all. So IP can pick all, will provide the complete detail of the machine. So I'm going to find out the physical MAC address, save, get the MAC address, come back to the Windows um, DHCP server. Under the reservation, I can create a new reservation and say reservation name, I'll say uh, something manager, just a name. And the IP address I'm going to reserve for this machine 75. And the MAC address I'm going to use it, that one. I'll say this is PZ02 reserve. Reserve IP. And what I'm going to do with the DHCP, click add and close. Now I can see there's a reserved IP in my DHCP scope. Let's go back to this machine. Since it's in DHCP, I can use the IP config and release command to release the IP address. So you can see here, there's no IP. It says unidentified network. And of course, if you see the IP config, you will not see an IP address. 169 IP address is an IP address. <clears throat> Let's renew the IP 
by using a command renew and um, now it should get the IP address 75 because I've reserved that IP address here so if I go to the address reserve and I can see he has already received the IP come back here um, let me come back and see yep I can see now IP config slash all has got a 75 IP address which is I just reserve which is exactly the reserved IP right that's the IP address I reserved it you can reserve even this machine's IP address 50 rather than going through these steps what you can do is you can go to this IP address release IP range right click and you can go and add reservation so that IP address is also reserved so you don't need to find the MAC address and do things because those information is already received by the DHCP server so you don't need to go back and find and do it but this is only possible if the computer has already received a IP address if the device hasn't received an IP address but you wanted to send this device to some remote location where they wanted to connect to their local area network and then um, attach that machine to network where it wants to have or you want to have an IP address then you have to go uh, the other way you have to find the MAC address and reserve before you put them in the network and then you can do it so I just deleted from a reserve IP address and I can see the IP has gone back to the pool even in the reserved IP address pool, I can see what other information the device has got is the router, DNS, and domain name, which we have configured when we were installing the DNS services. Remember the DA gateway, DNS, and then we skip the wins, and then we have given the domain name. So these, these are received from the uh, previous configurations, right? <clears throat> Similarly, uh, we can utilize this filter option. By default, these are disabled filtering. You can see a small red arrow here down arrow that's mean they are not enabled so you have to first enable them to de uh, deny a machine to receive an IP address so first deny uh, enable that by right clicking there so you can just enable once you enabled it you can go and create a new filter lucky I have copied my MAC address before <clears throat> I'm going to just put the MAC address and I'll say PC02 right which is what the uh, computer uh, block IP and click add now I can see the MAC address is under the list it's under the filtered list right now let's go back to the machine and do a release again I'm going to release the IP address I think can pick release right the IP is gone right I'm going to renew if you renew the IP now let's see what happens because this this MAC address has been blocked under the denied list so the machine should not receive an IP address if it receive uh, receives an IP address then there's no point of doing those blocking systems right so I've just tried it let's wait let's wait um, until we get a message so we, we should get a message here meantime while waiting here let's go back to the domain and see what happens in the domain controller under the lease right address leases if you go under there and refresh right <clears throat> we can see the machine with the 75 IP address which because we reserved see the reason why that machine is trying to get the IP address 50 because that machine MAC address is already under the reservation right so we have got the IP address under the reservation so under that reservation IP address right if you go here I can see that machine it's an inactive now reservation is inactive even though it was active before but now it's become inactive just because the reason it's been denied we have configured the filtering option to deny this machine not to get an IP address right so let's go back to this machine and see this machine is trying to get the IP address we haven't got an IP so let's control C to break that request because it's keep on requesting the IP address so we can try that by looking at <coughs> a Wireshark packet. So if you download uh, Wireshark, sorry, you can't download because there is no internet. So I can try that right now. Maybe we can do it later on. So let's stop this configuration. Right, stop it. And if I see IP config, the machine has got no IP address. It got only Apipa IP. 
why we have this because the machine hasn't got IP it has received an automatic IP address automatic private IP address from the IP pass service which is IPv4 service so machine has got now IP <coughs> but this IP address cannot be used and it says see auto configuration IP address this IP address cannot be used to communicate with the other devices technically this IP address in IPv6 is there it's called as FE80 IP address which is a link local IP address that's just to communicate within the link which it means like within that device to another device so you cannot use that to communicate with the other devices on the network so machine here we have got the IP address no issues everything works perfect on this device let's go back to the network interface card let's go back to the network adapter ethernet adapter right under status as you see here it's all empty and you can see fe ip address fe is the ipv6 address right see fe80 ip link local ip address is already there right that's received from ipv6 um, anyway ipv6 is completely different concept we'll come back and look at it later on uh, when we look at ip dhcp version 6 this is dhcp version 4 so the machine has received ips and everything is listed here we can see the pool information you can add more options here if you go under scope option right you can add more options configure options um, you can set up a time time server if you have got an NTP server you can set up the NTP server so there are a couple of NTP servers available so you can go to Google find out the NTP server or an NTP server put the name and attach you can put some different time server that's to make sure that all the devices get the right time so every device will synchronize the time with other servers so you can put the NTP server and there are more options right see name servers lock servers cookies right host names uh, there, are, there are many options here right we can configure these all under the server options right or scope options right so there are a lot of options available so we can configure it depends on your requirements you can do right under policies we can define policies we can create new policies here right um, for specific services, uh, specific device and vendors, see vendor class, user class, as I said, if you have a, got a specific vendors like Microsoft, um, let's say you got a Mac operating system computers or Mac computers or Android from Samsung, if you wanted to specifically provide IPs to specific vendors, you can provide specific vendor policies and then you can attach them and configure it, right? So all these options are available under this configuration. So. There are more options if you go on IPv4 and property you can see the options for DNS services to work with DHCP filtering services enable deny list because remember I enabled it here not the allow list I didn't enable we can configure if you have got multiple servers you can configure the failover and then other configuration for advanced configuration where to save the old files and everything we can have it here this is my DHCP server so that's where the DHCP service has been configured and this is where DHCP keeps the backups. Um, pool, yep, that's your scope service. If you want to change it, if you are wondering like how do I change my, because of, I configured eight days while I just create this pool or scope, how do I now change it? Just go back to properties and you can change it here, right? Uh, again, if you want to change the, extend your IP range, you can extend the IP range. If you want to provide the DNS information, you can change your DNS information and you can do it, right? <clears throat> At once, whether it wants to use a DHCP or boot P, or you want to use it for both services. Boot P is for the uh, network, we talk about network PXE boot, right? So that's the that options is available here. Address pool, as we expected, lease, we know, reservation, we checked it, scopes, policies. Yes, we have server options, right? You can configure different options, server options, similar to what we have gone through with the scope option. We can configure for servers. If you have got multiple servers, we can set up for multiple server options. Filters, the same thing can be repeated for IPv6. You can create the new scope for IPv6 here, right? Sorry, IPv6 here, and you can go through and configure the IPv6 policy. So that's pretty much what we have on the DHCP.